or something, y'all let me know, all right? All right, Acts 12, 25, amen, hallelujah. Here it is, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark, amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We praise you that your word, Lord God, hallelujah, is, whoo, it's like fire shut up in our bones sometimes, God. We, we thank you that your word, Lord God, makes us wiser than the ancients, wiser than our teachers, wiser even than our enemies. We thank you, God, that through your word you can sanctify us with your truth. Thy word is truth. So bless your word, God. Let it accomplish the purpose for which it's sent out. Help me not to get in the way of your word, God. We pray you declare to us what was, what is, and what is to come. Pray I decrease and you increase. In Jesus' name, amen. We just want to keep, amen, our sister Keela in prayer, amen. We, we, uh, we did the funeral for her mom, amen, on, on yesterday. So continue to pray, church. Continue to undergird, amen. And um, we just, uh, hallelujah, we just love that family. We want, to, we want to be by them, walk with them along the way. You never know when it's your time, amen. And, and uh, as we did the services on yesterday, one of the preachers said an amazing thing that, that uh, Ms. Keeler would have to, amen, uh, postpone her grieving for her husband that she might bury her mama. You know what I'm saying? And so, and so y'all just keep praying. Y'all keep praying, amen. Just fast pray, amen, that God will undergird, that God will strengthen, amen. And, uh, and we do that for one another, amen. We do that for one another, amen. The Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice, but also weep with those who weep, amen. And so uh, hallelujah, y'all keep, amen, uh, uh, Guillory family in, in prayer, amen. So Acts 12 and, and 25, amen, hallelujah, we're going to be looking at this verse and uh, we've been in the book of Acts. We're just kind of covering it chapter by chapter, line by line, precept upon precept. And, and in the book, things are about to switch up again. And so I'm going to go straight into it. We'll have, we'll have two points, amen, uh, coming out of this verse. And then I'm going to cut you loose and you can go home, amen. Uh, number one is fulfill their ministry. And number two Hallelujah, we're going to be talking about John Mark. Amen. Somebody say John Mark. John Mark. All right. And so uh, that's the two points we'll cover. Amen. One is a, a vision setting point, and then point number two is actually where well, we're going to be kind of breaking down some word a little bit. Amen. But I think that both points are useful uh, for this morning. And so let's look at point number one, fulfill their ministry. As we go back to verse 25, it says, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem. Amen. And when it says, And Barnabas and Saul, realize that the Bible right here is about to switch back. Somebody say switch back. Amen. Hallelujah. We went from Paul, amen, to Peter, and we're about to switch back to Paul right here. Amen. Remember, we just coming off a season of talking about Peter uh, being arrested and, and being on death row, amen, and the angel rescuing him. Well, yeah, that was a story about Peter, but we switching back. Somebody say switch back. Amen. We switching back to Paul. Amen. And for those Bible students out there, amen, when we switch to Paul right here, amen, the Bible is going to stay on Paul until the end of Acts. It's not going to switch back to Pete. And this is very pertinent, amen, because of the dispensation switch. Amen. Peter is the apostle of the Hebrews. I mean, uh, yeah, the Hebrews. Paul is the apostle for the Gentiles. Amen. And the dispensation is switching. The church has gone from the Hebrews to the Gentiles, amen. And so in this book right here, when we get to the threshold of, of chapter 13, right here, y'all, amen, this switch is going to go from the apostle of the Hebrews, Peter, to the apostle of the Gentiles, Paul, and it's going to stay right there. It's going to stay right there until the end of the book. Until the end of the book, but not only the end of the book, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. But how many people know in our day is switching right back? Anybody hear me up in here? Amen. 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 That, that was part of the prophecy. Amen. Until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Amen. And so 
Barnabas and Saul, so we, we switching. Amen. It says Barnabas and Saul, they did what? They returned from Jerusalem. This means, y'all, that during the whole event with Peter, Peter being locked up, the angel coming, the church praying, Peter knocking on the door, amen. Guess who was in Jerusalem while all these miracles, signs, and wonders was taking place? Paul and Barnabas was there. They was with the church praying. You see what I'm saying? And after God delivered Peter from prison, Paul saw it all. And I think it's important that Paul would see this because he's about to be in prison himself. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right? All right? Oh, yeah. Paul's about to be locked up. He's going to get delivered too. You remember the story of the Philippian jailer when the Lord shook the prisons, amen, and all the chains came off? Amen? See, a lot of times God will prepare you about what you're about to go through by showing it in the life of somebody else so that you can look at how they go through it, so you can look at God working a miracle for them to build up your faith to be able to walk through it and get your blessing. Come on, give God some glory, amen? So you always got to be looking around. You can't just be self-contained and selfish because sometimes God is trying to preach to you through the life of somebody else. So Paul, Paul, Paul was watching it all. Watch the Lord deliver Peter from prison. So by the time he get in that Philippian jail and he's singing, amen, he has faith that God is able. Come on, give God some glory, amen. If you did it for Peter, you'll do it for me, amen. So the Bible says, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem. Now, right here, amen, they going back to Antioch, y'all. Amen. They, they went to Jerusalem, but they going back to Antioch, and and, and the Bible is going to tell us what they were doing in Jerusalem because they were there for a short while. Look what it says. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem, watch this, when they had fulfilled their what? Their ministry. You see? Paul and Barnabas was fulfilling ministry. All right? That word ministry means service. It means relief. It means to help meet the needs by collecting or distributing. Amen. That's the Greek word here for ministry. So there was a ministry that Paul and Barnabas was fulfilling. There was a mission that they were on. Amen. And to find out exactly what they was doing in Jerusalem, you got to go back to Acts 11. Amen. Acts 11, 27 is going to tell us what Paul and Barnabas was doing. Watch this. Watch this. In 11.27, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. We're going back in time. They're in the Antioch church before they visited Jerusalem. And there stood up one of them named Agabus. Somebody say Agabus. You know, somebody, somebody say, I know a dude named Agabus in Macomb. You see? One of them named Agabus. And he signified by the spirit that there should be a great Dirt throughout the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Agabus was a prophet, y'all. All right? And he wasn't like them in the church that claimed to prophesy, but they ain't talking about nothing. You understand what I'm saying? I heard, I heard, they ain't heard nothing. Agabus was real. And we got situations in the Bible that when Agabus show up and say something is going to happen, it happens. Uh, uh, around Acts 20, around the latter verses, latter chapters of Acts, amen, Agabus stand up and he tell Paul, he say, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Chains await you in Jerusalem. The same way that I am right now, he tied some shirts and some fabric around his hand. He said, this is what awaits the Paul if he go back to Jerusalem. And guess what? Agabus was right on it. This is a real prophet right here. Well, this prophet prophesies. And what does he prophesy? He prophesies that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world. Now, we don't use that word dearth no more, all right? We chilling in these days. Somebody's saying there is a dearth <laughs> on Simcoe today, you know? We don't say that word no more. But a dearth means that the weather is affected so bad, amen, that it produces a halt in all food production. It's a famine. It's when food gets scarce. No corn, 
no bread, no potatoes, no okra, no yams. Oh, somebody felt that one. Somebody said a dearth. It's a famine. So Agabus stand up and he said, y'all, I heard from the Lord, a famine is coming. A famine is coming. Now watch this. The Bible says, which came to pass. Luke interjects. Hallelujah. Luke said, guess what, y'all? He not only prophesied that, but Luke said, it did come to pass. And then he tags a historical figure on it. He says, it came to pass. And the days who? Claudius Caesar, which was actually a Roman emperor. And this famine really came to pass according to Josephus. Josephus said, because Jerusalem rejected the bread from heaven, God denied them the bread from earth. Ooh, anybody hear me up in here? They rejected Jesus. Amen. And God made as though it were the ground iron and the sky brass. Nothing coming down and nothing coming up. Somebody say a dearth. All right. A famine. That's why you got to be careful the way you treat God. Because God controls whether we eat or not. And as I look at this text, I think about America. I think about America. And how they're rejecting God in every kind of way. They're rejecting what God called marriage. They're rejecting how God said to raise your kids. They're rejecting the way God said to dress. They're rejecting the way God said you should, what you should watch and what you should listen to. They're rejecting God's Bible. They're rejecting creation. They're rejecting, hallelujah, how the earth really looks. They're rejecting, amen, what true religion looks like. They, they're rejecting everything that God says. They're calling wrong right and right wrong. You got to be careful, America. When you reject the bread from heaven, God will put a stop to the bread that come from earth. Anybody hear me up in here? What you do when you're a historian, you look at nations. And you look at the mistakes nations make. And you look at the timeline when they make those mistakes, how long it takes for God to react to correct them. I look at America and I see the mistakes of former nations that are no longer in existence. And I look at the timeline of those nations when they began to allow sexual perversion, when they began to allow heathenistic, idolatrous ways to rule their government. I look at those nations, look at the timeline, and I deduce from history, hallelujah, looking at the present, because you don't know where you're going until you know where you came from. So you look at history. Then you look at the present, amen, and you say, it won't be long. You say it won't be long. That's what you say. With the murders, the abortions, huh? The homosexuality, transgender. Just a few words. It won't be long. It won't be long. Are you hearing me up in here? That's what Agabus got up and spoke over Jerusalem. Now watch this. In verse 29, then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. All right? So after Agabus prophesied, the disciples in Antioch say, oh, no. Agabus, if it's going to be a famine, we got to send relief to Jerusalem. We got to send food to Jerusalem. We got to send food because, listen, this is where this gospel come from. This is the mother church. This is where we get this cross, this Christ, this, this, this doctrine, amen, of salvation, amen. We Gentile, they Hebrew, but they God. We got what we need from this church. And famine might hit the whole world, but we got to make sure they stay eating in Jerusalem. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. So they sent relief. 
How did they send relief? Look at the next verse. It says, which also they did, and they sent it to the elders, the apostles, by who? By the hands of who? Barnabas and Saul. That's why Barnabas and Saul was in Jerusalem. That's why they were there. They went to fulfill their ministry. They had came with bread. They came with supplies. They came with money. They came with silk. They came with gold to prepare Jerusalem for a coming family. The family hadn't even come yet. But how many people know that God never does anything on the earth without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets? Anybody hear me up in here? And the reason God do that is because when it happened and it break down, God do that, number one, I told you so before it happened. Number two, he always want to protect his people. He never punishes the righteous with the wicked. Never does. In the days of Noah, he saved some. In the days of Lot, he saved some. When he brought Jericho down, he saved one or two or three, Rahab and her family. He never punishes the righteous with the wicked. Come on, give God some glory, amen? This makes me think about something that we're doing as a church, amen? And it brought me to the vision that we have for the church point property. For those that don't know, yes, we got 14 acres off of university, but we also have 22 plus acres in Church Point. All right? We got 22 acres in Church Point. Amen? Go ahead and, and, and flip the pictures. Amen? For those who hadn't been able to go. Yeah, that's that suit truck right there, y'all. That's that suit truck. That's Sue and Mrs. Dwight. Amen? They kind of helped me out with this particular project. Amen? Go ahead and flip it again. That's the fence line. And the fence line just continues to go. It's 22 acres, y'all. It's 22 acres, and it's ours. It's cash money. It's paid for. Anybody hear me up in here? We don't owe nobody nothing for it, all right? That's the fence line, amen. It just keep going, amen. You got another shot of it, amen, or that's it? Oh, no, go back, go back, go back. Not too soon, all right? Listen to me good right here. We doing Philly Farms and Retreat Center. And we're doing it, amen, hallelujah, for two reasons. Number one, when our ladies go on a retreat, amen, we go into our own stuff. Anybody hear me up in here? <laughs> ain't no bed bugs. Ain't no having to sleep in their car. We're going to do it the Philly way. It's going to be up to our standards, everything clean, everything excellent, amen. And, and, and after our ladies go over there and they got bed bugs, they sent us a $16,000 bill. So we come back and we say, nah. We're going to do our own. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, give God some glory. Now, <laughs> now of course, we, we, did, we did negotiate that bill because of the you know, adverse conditions our ladies were in. But we don't want to do that no more. We're building our own retreat center so the men could retreat, the ladies could retreat. You know what I'm saying? Families could retreat, okay? Now watch this, all right? I'm going to show you some, some slides. The USDA been kind of advising us about, because we want to do a side for agriculture with, 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 with uh, livestock and a side for 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 farming, you know what I'm saying? Greens and vegetables and different things of that nature. We want to we want to have this thing self-sufficient. We wanted to be able to produce the necessary food and tap into the aqueducts under so we can have the necessary water we need and not have to rely upon any of them people. But 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 I digress. You see, so so this is the vision. Go ahead and flip. Amen. We we got with the architect and we they've been Mr. Dwight been talking with the USDA and they want us to take 11 acres and devote one track to livestock and agriculture. But the other 11 acre track, amen, we're going to devote to housing. Go ahead and flip to the next one, amen. We could fit on 11 acres 62 residences, amen. You understand what I'm saying? That's 62 of them, amen, with, amen, a general assembly building. Anybody hear me up in here, amen. 
All right? All right? And that's just on, that's just on 11. We got 22, but we would just use that 11. And what most people don't know, let me just cast vision here. There's, 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 there's more land around our land. That, that I'm in communication with the people with, they, they, they selling it, you know what I'm saying? So as we grow in this, amen, that's 62 homes per 11 acres, but they got 55 more acres down, back there. You understand what I'm saying? So by the time it's over, if we do it right, we could have at least 300 residences, amen, 300 little, little tiny homes, amen, and, and we're looking at some stuff. Come on, just let me cast vision. Go ahead and flip it. We're looking at doing some little, some little small, you know what I'm saying? We're doing one bedroom, two bedroom, and we're going to do a few three bedrooms. Amen. Retreat center. So when we have something as a church, you could go to it. Amen. And, 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 and even some other times. Now, now that's, that's, that's during normal times, Kev. But how many people know you always got to have oil in your lantern? You understand what I'm saying? You got to have oil in your lamp. All right? Now, so say we sitting on 300 homes with a few of these event centers on every track that can hold bunk beds, hold people. A catastrophe happened where famine hit, where, where the Dow Jones fall because of trade wars with China, where where more of these stores, amen, these, these, stores that's, these stores that's too big to fail, more of them fail. You understand what I'm saying? Us as a people would have some place to go in the event that God would judge America. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right? That might be too far for you to think, but this is what I think. This is how I think. I know you think about what you're going to eat for lunch today. And how you going to have leftovers for dinner. I understand that. But what about if the bottom drop out? That's what I think about. You understand what I'm saying? Let me cast more vision. All right? After I get with the architects, because they drew up, amen, this design right here for track two. All right? I'm going to get with them, and they're going to design... The cookie cutter designs for the 62 houses. They gonna all look nice, look the same. Like I say, one bedroom units, two bedroom units, three bedroom units. All right. I'm gonna find out the cost of every unit. All right. We are gonna use our people to build the units. Anybody hear me up here? All right. All right. <laughs> Cause we got contractors. We got electricians. We got sheet rockers. Come on, holler here if you hear me, Sergio. We got, we got sheet rockers. We got, are you hearing me up here? So, so we got pants. We got all that. All right? And so we, we planning on cutting that cost down, Minister Sam. All right? And we just going to bill it. Now watch this. All right? They got people from out of town that's going to want to be a part of this. Had a lady call me from New Orleans, amen, when she heard we bought the property, she said, she say, save a spot for me. Another family called and said, we got RVs, amen. Can you put an RV hookup center on that thing? You understand what I'm saying? Because we coming to be with our people. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and we're not prejudiced. We're going to take anybody that believes in Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? That understand who we are. And whose we are, it's not about a, a race thing, it's about a God thing. All right? Now watch this. Watch this. When I find out how much every home costs, I'm going to give the people, amen, an opportunity to cast their bread. It, it, it's, it's not a drive. It's not a drive. It's not a drive. It's not a drive. It's an opportunity to invest and a secure and stable future. It's the opportunity to have a place to go when all hell break loose. And what we're going to do it like, I'm just casting vision, and y'all the first to hear it. I kind of touched upon it in D.C., but we're going to do it almost like during normal times, it'll be like a timeshare thing. 
You're going to invest in one of these little homes, and guess what? Out of the year, during normal time, you could take your family, come to it, enjoy it, ride the horses that's out there, fish in the ponds that's out there. You can do what you want to do, amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can do it. We'll give you a few weeks based upon the size of your investment. All right? Now, in times of catastrophe, the same going to apply. The amount of investment you put in going to determine the time, amen, you get to stay in the homes, amen. And what it'll be like is, is that more than one family will invest to be able to build a home on that. All right? And if catastrophe hit, you don't want to be spending 365 days out of the year under open heaven with water on you. But during times of plenty, you cash your bread. And so... Half a week, you're able to stay under something. You understand what I'm saying? The other half, you're able to go into our general facility where we got showers and bunk beds and whatnot. This might be too much for some people, but I'm casting vision. God is telling me, prepare a Goshen. God telling me, prepare an ark for the people. Amen. We don't know what's coming, but it's good to be prepared when it comes. Oh, God. Y'all ain't... I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Look, Ecclesiastes 11.1 1 says it like this. It says, cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. You see, when you throw your bread, your money, your lajon, on something that's meaningful, not shoes, <laughs> not just hair, not just finger, not just makeup, not just cars, not just rims, but you actually cash your bread on something that's going to hold some value and help you. The Bible says after, how long? Many days. Oh, when you're in need, guess what you're going to do? You're going to find it. Come on, give God some glory, amen. And I'm not saying nothing wrong with buying those things, but there's some things you should prepare for before you buy those things. Verse 2, look what it says. It says, give a portion to seven. And also to eight. Watch this. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. You don't know what's coming, though. You don't know what's evil, what evil's coming. That's why you got to prepare. And for those who don't know, the rich preparing you. The mother people preparing the mother people got missile silos and underground bunkers. They got property. Amen. The mother people preparing. And what I keep hearing in my spirit is, what about my people? What about my people? Are they preparing? So not now. Not now. But I'm just casting the vision. I'm just showing you what we're doing. I'm just showing you the direction we're going. People are going to start getting their ducks in the room. People from California and Texas are going to start calling already. Philly, we're going to do this. We're going to build this ark for the people of God. Come on, give God some glory. Amen? Amen? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. And we're going to pay you for your service as you provide a service to help us with that. You see, it's going to have to be going to have to have people to work this thing. People that's going to have to be on the grounds and on the premises and taking care of them because we want it excellent. You know? We're going to do this for the people. Come on, give God some glory. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Love, did I forget anything about it? All right. All right. Point number two. Point number two. They like pastor tell us no. No, that's it. That's it. You got to give revelation. In portions. Amen. Revelation in portions. Amen. Revelations in portions. Amen. And I'm telling you here, when we done, it's going to be 100% paid for. So what that means is why they're kicking everybody else out of everything else? While the bank's taking everything? They, you can't take that. You didn't pay for that. You, you can't take that. We paid for that. You can't come and take that. You come, we're going to say, get off our property. 
That's another thing, because you know the sheepdog going to be out there. Sheepdog's going to be out there. Oh, I'm giving y'all too much. I'm giving y'all too much. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. What's our second point? John Mark, what's our second point? That's right. Let's talk about John Mark. Let's look at verse 25. Is that too much for y'all? Got a cast vision. Got a cast vision. Oh, yeah. 25. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So we, we see Barnabas and, and Saul, who we would call Paul, they returned to Antioch. They came, they brought relief to the Jerusalem church. They brought them supplies. They provided, amen, uh, for the famine that was coming so that the church could be all right. You know what I'm saying? And right before they leave to go back to Antioch, Amen. They take somebody with them. A person in the Bible by the name of, of John Mark. He's a young man. Amen. And he has two names. Uh, he's, a, he's a Hebrew young man. But he's a Roman citizen. As you'll find out, John Mark comes from a very affluent family. Amen. They got money. Anybody hear what I'm talking about? So he has two names. He has a Hebrew name, uh, uh, Johannes or John, which means grace or God's grace. But he also has a, a Roman name, which is Mark, short for Marcus, which means warrior-like. All right? Peter decides to call him his Hebrew name. Peter just calls him John. Or uh, when he calls him, he'll say John Mark, you know. Uh, uh, but this Hebrew, amen, is brought along with Barnabas and Paul. Now, John Mark was related to Barnabas, y'all. Barnabas comes from a wealthy family as well. Remember, Barnabas was the one that gave the land to the church. Y'all remember that? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so he's Barnabas' nephew. If you look at Colossians 4 and 10, come on, come on, don't fall asleep. We're studying. Colossians 4 and 10. The Bible says, uh, Paul is talking, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluted you. And Marcus, that's John Mark, sister's son to Barnabas. And so the King James is saying that, that Barnabas' sister had a son by the name of John Mark. That's Marcus. And if that's Barnabas' sister, son, that would be Barnabas' is what? His nephew. You know what I'm saying? Other newer translations say that John Mark is Barnabas' cousin. But at this point, I don't care if you say if his nephew or his cousin, they relate. <laughs> All right, that's good enough for you. Okay, okay. So John Mark's mama uh, was named Miriam, or as they would call it in the, the Greek Bible, her name was Mary. All right. And uh she was very wealthy, very influential. In fact, her house was the meeting place of the Jerusalem church. All right? When they talk about them being in the upper room, when they talk about them being, amen, uh, uh, praying, amen, uh, when prayer was made for Peter, guess where those 120, those, all those people in the Jerusalem church, guess where they met? They met at Mary's house. All right? Somebody say a big house. Must have been a big house, y'all. All right? In Acts 12, 12, look what it says. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary. This is Peter. Peter is just released from prison. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of who? Of John, of John Mark, all right? Whose surname was Mark. Where many were gathered together praying. So when he went knock at the house and they wouldn't open it, that was John Mark's house. That was John Mark's mama's house. You see? They were very wealthy. This is important now. This is important. All right? Here, John Mark accompanies Paul and Barnabas back to Antioch. All right? Barnabas said, sis, never going to come with me. We're we doing a mission trip. We're going back to Antioch. 
all right? And, 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 and you know, he's taken his nephew everywhere they go, all right? They not only go back to Antioch, Mr. Sam, but we're about to see that Antioch is about to send Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey all across. And I don't know if Neff bargained to do all that. He said, I go to Antioch, but now y'all about to jump on the boat. Y'all about to cross. But in Acts 13, 5, watch this. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also, guess what? John, Mark, to their minister. John was their servant. He was serving them, helping them out, bring the word. He wasn't, he wasn't the head minister, but he, he, was, he was, the word minister means serve. He was, he was undergirding Paul and Barnabas, helping them, amen, on the first missionary journey. Now, for those who don't know, for some reason, Mark couldn't take the heat. Like I said, he, he went with his uncle to Antioch, but now y'all trying to go all over the place. It's okay, I come with you to Truman, but now you're in Wynale, you're in Coonville, you're going on. Come on, man, I just say, listen. Okay, y'all got that one. You ever pick somebody up and they say, bring me to Walmart? And then on the way back, they say, well, stop here. Bring me by Family Dollar, and oh, they didn't have, come by Dollar Tree. Okay, y'all got that one, okay, all right, we working, we working. So John Mark, like, look, I'm going to Antioch with you, but, but something happened. They began to want to make all kind of stops and go all kind of places. And then while they're going, amen, when, if you know your Bible, we're going to get into it, spiritual warfare began to happen. They run into a sorcerer. He trying to stop them from spreading the gospel. Paul got to pray the heavens down on his sorcerer and, and tell him he's going to be blind for a certain amount of days. And I mean, it's just, it's devils. It's, and, and John Mark like, man, listen, man. I ain't signed up for all this. Y'all on the boat, it's raining, y'all walking everywhere. Listen, man, I, listen, I got a room at home with air conditioning. Y'all follow me? John Mark couldn't take the heat, man. He wasn't from that. And so he went back home. He aborted the mission. He, he, he deserted them. He said, y'all keep on going, but I'm out of here, man. And in Acts 13, 13, look what it says. Hallelujah. And when Paul and his company loosed from Pamphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, what did he do? He departed from them and returned to Jerusalem. This was a great failure in John Mark's life. He quit. He turned his back. And the Bible says, no man, having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is worthy to follow the Lord. Anybody hear me up in here? He quit on them, man. And Paul took that hard. Paul wanted him no nonsense, brother. He said, he bought probably Ronnie P. Height. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't just nah, no nonsense. He said, you be there for 145? Look, 145. Wait up. I know somebody who could do an impression of Ronnie P. Hold on. Y'all going to be there for 145? Y'all going to be there for 145? Be there for 145. <laughs> We've been, we've been working on that, Ronnie P. We've been, we've been working on that. My dog, bro. We got something for basketball season two coming. But Paul, Paul was no nonsense, man. Just trying to keep y'all up. We, we, we talking about some history, so I gotta, we gotta, gotta keep y'all up, okay? So, so Paul was no nonsense like that. You know? And, and, when John Mark quit on him, man, Paul was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. You know? You, 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 we're not about to go through this again. You done. You see? 
But when they got ready to go on the second missionary journey, Brother Jim Albo, you remember that? Huh? The second missionary journey in Acts 15, 36, they back to Antioch, they're about to ship off again. Barnabas like, like Paul, wait, wait, wait. Neff want to come. Paul said, who? Neff who? <laughs> Neff who? You got another nephew? Not John Mark. You see? Oh, God. Let me, let me just read. Let me just read. 1536. And some days after Paul and Barnabas, Paul, Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again to visit our brethren in every city where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they do. 37. Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them. Why? Who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Paul said, nah, bro. He don't have the commitment to do this. He left us hanging, man. He failed us. We're going to get out there, take him with us, and we're going to have to carry his luggage, amen, because he's going to just leave. That's more stuff for me to carry. Paul said, nah. But Barnabas, on the other hand, said, give him another chance. Barnabas' other name is the son of encouragement, son of consolation. When other people reject people, Barnabas, take them in. In fact, when they all had rejected Paul, guess who accepted Paul? Barnabas. <laughs> and Barnabas just doing what he always do. Yeah, he messed up. He failed. But don't count him out. Don't count him out. Because people make mistakes, but they recover from their mistakes. Sometimes. So Barnabas like, nah, we're going to take him, Paul. Paul said, who you talking to like that? I know you're taller than me, yeah, Barnabas, but I'm telling you right now. I'm joking. <laughs> but the Bible say this. Just trying to keep y'all up. The Bible say this. 39. And the contention was so sharp between them. They got in touch so bad. Two apostles. That they departed asunder from one another. They couldn't even work together no more. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose another man by the name of Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And they went to Syria, Cilicia, confirming the churches. You see? John Mark. John Mark, he failed. That failure was accepted by Barnabas, his uncle, and said, we're going to still take him. Paul wasn't going to accept it. Amen. And it split the missionary team. Now you say that's a bad thing. I say no, it's not a bad thing. See, some splits got to happen. Anybody hear me up in here? In ministry, don't you? Confirmation for my marriage. I'm not talking about the marriage. I heard that in the spirit. Somebody said, you see, babe? You see? No, no, talking about in ministry. Because when this happened, watch this, watch this. Brother Sam, we're not told who right and wrong in this, no. We just told the facts. Because I could see from Paul's side, and I could see from Barnabas' side. The split happened. Luke just recorded the facts. But all I know is that God calls all things to work together for the good of those who love him. Ha! And we started off with one team going one place. Now we got two teams going two places. Anybody hear me up in here? He's amazing. He's amazing. Somebody say John Mark. So Paul takes Silas. And Barnabas, he takes John Mark. Now years would pass, y'all, and John Mark would begin to recover. And redeem himself. How many people know that in ministry and in the Lord is not how you start, but it's how you finish that comes. And I love this story about John Mark because some of us quit or fail or not really as successful as we want to be during certain times in our life. 
And the story of John Mark is a story that encourages us to keep on. To keep on, to press on, to have grit. Don't let one event define your whole life. Anybody hear me up in here? You got to remember, failure is an event. It's not a person. You are not a failure. You might have failed, but you're not a failure. It's an event that happened to you. It is not you. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, you ain't hearing me up in here. John Mark would redeem himself, and he would come on strong. He started off in the negative, but he about to pass a whole bunch of people up. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? He redeems himself so well, I'm going to mix up our scriptures. Go to Philemon 124. I'm going to tell you. Amen. He says, Paul begins to see the value of John Mark. He says, there salute the Epaphras, who was, who was an amazing, amazing minister of the Most High God. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. And look who he wants to talk about now in 24. He says, Marcus, the one he said was not worthy, the one he didn't want to take. He said, Marcus, and he calls him something. He says, my fellow laborer, somebody who good enough to work alongside me. You know, sometimes you could do something well and somebody won't be able to do it that well. And you don't want them by your side. You know what I'm saying? But how many people know if they work hard that a day can come where they be your fellow labor? They shooting ball right on the side. You passing them the ball. You understand what I'm saying, Tyrone? It was a time when, when hey, God, Lil D and Seth, amen, you wouldn't consider them a, a fellow labor, but they grew up. Oh, I'm hearing something in the spirit. They grew up. You know what I'm saying? And now you're honored to pass them the rock. Now you're honored to pass. You see what I'm saying? There was a time, Delhi, when, 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 when D-Don, little Cordell, hallelujah, he might not have been able to, to be by your side on that field, amen, but, but they grow up, they get stronger, and now you'll be honored, and one day we're going to be out there, and he's going to be out. He, he, he able to be out there with a nine. But I'm just saying, he, John Mark grew up in the spirit. He didn't stay the little boy that had left him. What Barnabas said came to pass. You see? A lot of the ones we look at that can't do it now will be able to do it soon. Anybody hear me up in here? <laughs> That's why you treat them all with respect. You treat them all with respect. Even our little children in here, y'all. Them youngsters in here, don't just talk to them any kind of way, no. As they get older, give them increasing levels of respect because the day going to come when they're going to be your fellow laborers. <laughs> Preaching with you, teaching with you, worshiping with you. Oh, I'm, oh God. I'm... Colossians 4.10. Paul talks about his soldiers again. He talks about Aristarchus, who's another awesome soldier. Fellow prisoner saluted you. Watch this. He brings up Marcus again. And Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. Wait, 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 Paul. You telling a whole nother city, a whole nother community of believers to receive Marcus when you wouldn't receive him yourself? When you wouldn't take him with you yourself? Not only to receive him, but if Marcus show up, Colossus, if he tell y'all the command of the Lord, listen to him because he connected with the most high. This is what Paul is saying. Do you see how the, the script is flipping? Somebody say flip the script. See, you might be on the bottom right now. You might not be worthy for anybody to listen to you or anybody to recommend you. But just keep pressing, just keep reading, just keep praying, just keep fasting. Listen, trouble don't last always, and a time will come where God, watch this, will flip the script. And they'll recommend you. You understand what? They'll recommend you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Daddy 
will recommend you. Mama will recommend you. You was the good for nothing, son. They'll recommend you. Pastor will recommend you. You were the one giving all kind of trouble, coming up with all kind of false doctrine, splitting, cutting up, all that. But something happened. Time happened. God happened. Growth happened. Hey! And I'm calling Chicago, receive him. Receive her. And what they command you to do, you do it. Because they done grew up in the Lord. That's my prayer for so many of y'all in here. So many of y'all in here. I got some John Marks up in here. I got, hey, come on, we almost done. Listen, listen, listen. Then it come to the place, 2 Timothy 4.11. Paul saying this, only Luke is with me. He said, take Mark and bring him with thee. Watch this. For he is profitable to me. For the ministry. <laughs> what happened, Paul? He grew up. What happened, Paul? He grew up. What happened, Paul? He grew up. Hey, anybody want to grow up in here in the spirit? Amen. Oh, the same one I wouldn't have near me, Paul say. Bring him with you. Let me see him. I, I need him. He's profitable to me. Yeah, we went through a tough spell. Yeah, it didn't always look right. Oh, but he done learned some lessons. He done took his bumps and bruises. He done put on his belt, put on his pants like a man. Now he ready. He done grew up. Bring him to me, Paul said. For he's profitable unto me. You see? Pastor, what's the message, Pastor? Listen to me. Hang in there. Show some grit. Be courageous. The race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but those that endure. Listen to me. Just endure. Just endure. Just hang around. Just hang around. The bus going to come sooner or later. <laughs> Pastor, you said that's all nice about John Mark, but I'm not done with his accolades and his accomplishments. Because after hanging with Paul, amen, he was hanging with Peter. And in 1 Peter 5, 13, I'm almost finished, baby. 1 Peter 5, 13. <laughs> the Bible tells us the church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluted you. So does Marcus, watch what Peter called him, my son. He with Peter. Now, I'm not saying he Peter blood son. Y'all been watching too much Young and the Restless. <gasps> Peter had a baby. <laughs> no, no, no. This ain't a story. <laughs> when they say that in the scriptures, he talking about what? Y'all his spiritual son. Barnabas poured in time, Paul poured in time, and Peter poured in time. And Peter poured so much in John Mark, spent so much time with John Mark, that John Mark just sits and listens to all the stories Peter tell about Jesus. He's just sitting down there and listening. And one day, John Mark, amen, takes out a pen. He said, you know, Peter, I'm going to write down these stories. When you start talking, I'm going to go ahead and write a little bit. And history says that Peter said, well, do it if you want, do it if you don't want. But listen, let me tell you about the time we were with Jesus in the boat. <laughs> and John Mark just kept writing. And because of John Mark, the one who was a failure, when you open up you, your New Testament... You got the book of Matthew, <laughs> then you got the book of Mark. Anybody hear me up in here? That's the John Mark that wrote us the gospel of Mark. Are you with me here so far? That's John Mark, man. From the mouth of Peter, what went down. 
This gospel would be used by some of the other apostles to pin the synoptic gospels. They would use John Mark's gospel as a blueprint from the mouth of Peter to write, you know what I'm saying, Luke and John. Are you hearing me up in here? Somebody say John Mark. Tradition tells us that John Mark became an awesome evangelist. Wind up with his brown skin going to Egypt and witnessing to other brown skinned people. And started what they called the Egyptian Christian Church or the Coptic Church in Egypt. Tradition holds that John Mark was martyred. Some idolaters in Egypt told him to renounce Christ. He would not. They tied him up to some horses and drug him around the city till he died. But even being dragged by horses, he would never say that Jesus wasn't risen, nor that Jesus wasn't Lord. The one who quit, tied to horses, being drugged through the city, never let go of his Savior again. Anybody hear me up in here? It's not how you start, it's how you what? The race is not given to the swift for the what? But those who endure. Pastor, what's my word? Finish well. Finish well. Finish well in the faith. Finish well. Finish well in your marriages. Finish well. You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to give up. Finish well. Finish well with your children. Want to write them off. Get rid of them. And there are times for that. But if you can, and God going to lead you, hold on till he give you the signal to release. Anybody hear me up in here? And he's going to give you that signal, <laughs> like the father, the prodigal son. You understand what I'm saying? But don't you throw in the towel before he give you the towel to throw in. Somebody say, finish well. Finish well. See? Even in business. At work. Being a success and making money. Be a John Mark even in that, man. I'm going through different things. Faith, family, hallelujah. And, and, and business and producing, being a producer. Man, finish well. Don't quit, man. You're going to fail. You're going to hit your head. Hallelujah. Things going to happen. You're going to get fired. You're going to have to close a business. Bankruptcy might happen. It don't, none of that matter. You wake up tomorrow and you start again. You understand what I'm saying? Well, that didn't work. <laughs> we'll do it again. That's what you got to do. If you're starting a business, you got to have grit. You got to be a John Mark. To start a business is one of the hardest things. Usually take years before your business can even take care of itself, let alone take care of you. But you got to hang in that. Because once it starts taking care of itself, it's going to take care of you and people around you. But you got to wait on it. You got to wait on it. Oh, somebody, y'all not hearing me. Oh, come on, I'm winding down. I'm in my second conclusion. I'm winding down. Pastor, I'm including you. Got it. Just two, just two. Had a man who went out to California during the gold rush, sold everything he had, go open up a business, gonna try to find some of that gold. You see? Probably was around the mid 1800s, 1849, that's why they call that old team over there, the 49ers. Because in 49, everybody was going down there for gold. I'm going to move on. This man went down there, sold everything he had. Bought a tool kit. Kept digging for gold, kept digging for gold. And nothing happened. His business was failed. So he quit. He said, I'm quitting. He said, I don't even want the tools I bought. I'm quitting. Took his tools and he dig one last hole. 
And he put his tools in that hole and he buried it. He went home. Broke. Busted. A quitter. A company came right behind him. Digging in the same spot. They hit a load of gold so big that it made the company wealthy for, for decades. They hit what they call a gold vein. It was just gold just everywhere. While they pulling up the gold six inches from where they found the gold, they found a bag of tools. He was six inches from success. You can't quit. When y'all ready to throw on the towel, encourage one another. That's not me and first lady do yet. And quit and jump on you sometimes. It jump on you. And that's why two is better than one. And I wake up and I say, babe, I'm done. She said, not yet. She wake up. She said, how long we been doing this? Let's go ahead and move to somebody. I said, no, babe, we can't. Not yet. And it seemed like the days I want to quit, she there for me. The days she won't quit, I'm there. Because you could be six inches. From success. Not only starting a business, but keeping it running. There's going to be some times you want to quit. Sometimes you want to throw in the towel. But you got to keep pressing. My little team at, at Royal Title, they say, <laughs> when they say, Pastor, we got a problem, we got this and that, I look at them and I say, make it work. <laughs> oh, yeah, Miss Michelle, take, make it work. When this problem happens, okay, do something about it. Let's make it work. We're not going to quit till the deal is done. We're not going to quit till we get them in that house. We're not, we just, it's just, we, we, we just not going to quit, y'all. We just, it's grit, it's perseverance. Be a John Mark. Have it in every area of your life. No matter if you fail, you get back up. The righteous man fall at seven times, but just get right back up. They use this little poem, this little poem, and I'm done. It's my third conclusion. Huh? You, you can start. Yeah, you can start. Help me out there, Carlos. Let me, take me down from here. Take me down! Stop playing. I'm going to just read this little thing, Carlos. It might be good. It's a little poem they gave us while we was in school, man, and I, I never forgot it, you know? It's called Don't Quit. It says, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, when you want to smile, but you have to sigh or even cry, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must. But don't you quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns. As every one of us sometimes learns. And many a fellow turns about. When he might have won. Had he stuck it out. Don't give up. Though the pace seems slow. You may succeed. With just another blow. Often the goal is nearer than. It seems to the fate and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night came down how close he was to that golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint in the clouds of doubt. You never can tell how close you are. It might be near when it seems so far. One more line. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit is when things seems worse that you must not quit.
Come on, give God some glory in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, listen, we're going to go ahead and go. I told y'all I wouldn't be long. But we never like to leave this place without giving you an opportunity to close with Jesus Christ, to make him your Lord and Savior. See, John Mark's story is so good because he had a rock to lean on when things got tough. See, you're going to always want to quit if you don't have Jesus by your side. You're always going to leave one thing right when you was about to be successful. Go to another thing you're going to fail at, another thing you're going to fail at, another thing you're going to fail at. Jesus can change all that. He can help you win. But the first step is you're going to have to admit that you're a sinner. You're going to have to believe that he died on the cross, he rose from the grave, and that he's coming back again. You're going to have to confess him as your Lord. Amen. For real, confess him as your Lord. If you do that, God says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And with salvation comes a package deal of life and life more abundantly. So listen, we're going to open up the gates. We're going to ask anybody who is uncertain, uncertain whether they save or not to come make sure this morning. We're going to ask if there's anybody, amen, who felt like quitting something, that God want to keep you in. Maybe it's a ministry. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your kids. You just need prayer to be able to hang in just a little while longer. Ushers, open the gates. Everybody on the sound of my voice. If you need this altar, go ahead and come. 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 Come on. If you've been feeling like giving up, <laughs> come on and get a little more strength from the Lord. If you feel like you've been leaving things a little too early in life and go from one thing to another and really ain't found your niche we're going to pray that God give you that perseverance that grit to stick it out to hang on in the, some of y'all six inches away from success six inches so close but so far away we're going to pray Somebody say, Lord, Lord, thank you for your word. Make me a John Mark. Somebody who can get back up after they're knocked down. Give me grit, perseverance. Help me to endure in every area of my life. I want to go all rounds. I want to finish my race. Woo! I'm not a quitter. I'm an overcomer. I will wait on you, Lord. And I won't let you go until you bless me. It doesn't matter how I started. It only matters how I finish. And I want to finish strong. And I will finish strong. So Lord, I admit I've made my share of mistakes. But I repent, but I repent and, ask you and ask you 
to forgive me and save me and wash me clean. I believe in you with all my heart. You died. You were buried. And you rose again. Save me, Lord. And give me a new heart. And a new start. And make me a John Mark. A finisher. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God some glory. That's what he was. He was a finisher. He was a finisher. Had his ups and downs, his bumps and bruises, but he finished strong. And that's what I see in you. That's what I see in you. A finisher. Woo! Come on, give God some glory in this house. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. Call and pray. Call and pray. <laughs> May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you. And bless you. It was me, I did that. Are you going to shake my hand? May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with peace. You're a finisher. A finisher. We don't quit. We don't quit. You're a finisher. Woo! We're a finisher. We're a finisher. Woo!